your CID TV News Update. I'm Donna Bush. Thanks for joining us. Today we begin at the University College of the Cayman Islands, where Dr. Stacey McAfee started her new position on January 1st. The news president and CEO says she has lots of plans to help the institution grow and develop to international standards. I think if we were to step back and try to simplify what does it mean to be fulfilling our mission as the public university system for the Cayman Islands, I think we would focus on three specific things. First and foremost, we do need to ensure that we're delivering a student-centered education, and that means that more and more we're going to be solving, serving, I should say, both adults as well as school leavers. And those are two really big buckets. Within that, you're going to see a whole lot of difference in what adults bring to the table and what they need as well as with school leavers. And so we need to understand and build different types of instruction and curriculum and delivery of learning, um, both on campus and probably off campus. We need to think about how technology enables our learnings. Um, today, knowledge and information is ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't be confined to learning just in a classroom. Um, we also need to think about the overall student development, meaning it's not just great instruction from faculty to student, but learning is holistic. Mm -hmm. So building a suite of experiences curated to the needs of various types of learners, like clubs, like cooperative learning experiences with industry, um, just, those are just a few of the things that where students and um, mature adults learn leadership opportunities and see themselves in new ways. Um, so that's one piece of it, I think. To do that work, mm -hmm. the university has to focus on how we need to be resourced to deliver those, those types of learning experiences. And you can watch Dr. McAfee's interview here on CIG TV and on our YouTube channel starting next week, week Wednesday, January 16th, following For the Record at 8 p.m. Well, on Thursday morning, a meeting was held with stakeholders involved with the culture and heritage policy. Meetings have reconvened to work on the costed operational plan. Stakeholders will be meeting in the months ahead to discuss and work on the short, medium and long term priorities with the aim of putting the plan and policy into action. Back in 2017, the first printed copy of, copy of the National Cultural and Heritage Policy and Strategic Plan was unveiled. In it, policy directions for the culture and heritage sectors for the next 10 years is set out. Well, another round of Proud of Them recipients are announced. Twelve young women and men are part of the 10th cohort. Now, the young people are nominated for the award scheme um, for the work and commitment in various areas, including academics, sports, career, culture, business, or community service. On Wednesday evening, parents and supporters attended the event held to recognize the outstanding young people. And I encourage you to find that one or more youth that you can tap into and try nominating them in the next round within their respective category. Who knows what impact that could make on that child's life. The 12 successful awardees will each receive a financial award and their photograph will be featured for six months on billboards across the Cayman Islands. Started back in 2012 to highlight exceptional young people, the Proud of Them Award also showcases young persons' initiative and positive attitude. To date, 120 young men and women have been recognized. You can watch the entire Proud of Them Awards ceremony next Thursday, January 17th at 8 p.m. only on CIG TV and the CIG TV YouTube channel. Well, if you missed today's news update, you can go to the Cayman Islands Government Facebook page as well as our CIG Television YouTube channel. Wishing you a safe and wonderful night. I'm Donna Bush with CIG TV. Boating, fishing, and water sports in the Cayman Islands are great, but keep a cool head. Here are seven tips for fun and safe sea outings. Number one, use a checklist to plan your outing. Check the weather forecast, make a float plan, and share it with someone who is remaining on land, stating where you're going, with whom, and when you're expected to return. Visit your nearest marine supply store to get your safety gear. 
This includes signaling mirrors, whistles, and a flare kit. It's also very important to have onboard flotation devices and life vests for each person. There are different types of vests. Some are for water sport activities such as snorkeling and others are for going on offshore boating or on fishing trips. Number two, these items can be lifesavers in case of an accident or bad weather. Number three, use a motor kill switch, especially if you're boating alone. In case of a leak or breakdown, always stay with the boat until help arrives. If you capsize, an emergency beacon or locator device can send a distress signal to inform the authorities of your location. Larger flares will indicate distress to a boat, airplane, or search and rescue officials. Number four. In addition to sunscreen, food, and beverages, it would be smart to have a cell phone. Make sure your marine radio works. Command boaters use channel 16 to communicate. Number five. Also, don't forget your anchor and sufficient rope. Number six, boat operators should be familiar with the local waters and reefs, as well as the capabilities and functions of the vessels they are using. Always obey the rules of the sea and the marine environment and have courtesy for others. Number seven, alcohol and salt water do not mix, especially if you're the captain. Some useful contact numbers are 911, the RCIPS Marine Base is 649-7710 and the Port Authority is 949-2055. Smooth sailing all! I'm Jody Ann Powery, I'm the Police Media Officer with the RCIPS and I'm here to give you some crime prevention tips on how to best protect your property. The first thing that we want to discuss is our points of entries. Um, let's start with the front door and then we'll move on to the windows and the back doors or sliding glass doors. The first thing to consider is the front door. This particular front door has two deadbolt locks. One of these deadbolt locks are properly carpentered and the, the other is not. When your door is properly locked, you'll hear a click at the end and the dead bolts are not able to move. If it is slightly open, then you can push the dead bolt back without having any restrictions. I'll now proceed to show you what your lock should look like when it is properly locked. When it comes to your windows, you want to make sure that your window is locked all the way down because even though the lock is on, if it's not all the way down, it can still be pried. The proper way to lock the window is to make sure that the window goes all the way down to the seal and then you pull across the lock. When you have a sliding glass door at home, you want to make sure that you have secondary locking devices in addition to the lock that comes with the door. One of those can be a simple piece of wood that's jamming the doorway. We want to encourage you to ensure that you don't make things easy for burglars who are looking for opportunities to break into property by leaving your property out in plain view. Some of these items are your car keys, your electronics and your handbags. Make sure that you put these properties away when you're leaving the house or when you're going to bed. When you're going camping or if you're taking your family on a trip, you want to ensure that your property has some sign of life. This can be done by leaving a light on or putting timers on your lights. And we want to ensure that our family homes are safe. In order to do so, we encourage that people take the proper precautions by starting up neighborhood watches or encouraging family members or persons they trust to check on their properties while they're away. 